Hey everybody, Fallout here, and today we're going to talk about armor mods in Destiny 2. Before we dive in, I would like to quickly say a big thank you for helping me break 50,000 subs on this channel. You are all wonderful. That being said, definitely not enough. If by the end of this video we could get to say, I don't know, like 3.2 million subs, oh, that would be great. Anyway, as we all know, you can buy armor mods from the gunsmith at the tower and you can put them into your armor for additional benefits. It's important to know, though, that not just any armor mod can be inserted into any piece of armor. Only certain mods can be put into certain pieces of armor. Massive shout out to Datto for obtaining this information, which... Look, I'll just come out and say it. His chart wasn't visually pleasing to me, so I reorganized it, gave it a makeover, whatever you want to call it. I think this version is a little easier to read, but no matter. Datto is awesome. Please go check him out if you aren't following him already for whatever reason. Link to his channel in the video description. Okay, about this information, I know it's overwhelming. Bear with me. Focus on the left side first. Think about it this way, there's basically three types of mods that you can put into your armor. Mods that can affect your subclass ability cooldowns, mods that can affect your weapons, or mods that can affect your three primary stats, i.e. resilience, recovery, and mobility. If you don't know what those stats are, then boy do I have a video for you in the video description, go check that out. Now focus up top, these columns indicate the piece of armor that we're looking at with the far right columns being class item broken down into three sub-columns, one for each class. So why don't we go ahead and start off at the bottom of this chart, because that makes sense, with stat boosting mods. No matter which stat you are trying to increase, each mod is a plus one boost by itself. That's it. Plus one for each mod. And also, I'm pretty sure that the ceiling for any one individual stat is 10. How do I know? Well, first of all, you physically can't get the number higher than 10, no matter how hard you try. Um, but Fallout, what if the number is secretly going over 10 when we add mods to a stat that is already 10? All right, well, here's a recovery comparison of a regular level 10 recovery compared with a level, air quotes, 11 aka I hit 10 recovery and then I added a mod to try and hit 11 even though the number doesn't go over 10. Same recovery on both. 10 is the ceiling, I'm pretty sure. Next up we have our weapon boosting mods, starting with the mods that can increase your reload speed. Pretty straightforward here. This will differ from gun to gun. If you have a gun that has really, really bad reload time, then yeah, these can help you out, but if your gun already has a quick reload, then why bother? It's important to note that only the Titan is capable of getting the plus two reload buff because it's the only class that can get the reload mod into their class armor. Mods that boost your weapon handling affect two things. Your weapon switch time, demonstrated here, and your weapon ADS time, demonstrated here. Like the Titan and their reload speed, it's important to note that only the Warlock is capable of the plus two weapon handling buff because it's the only class that can get the weapon handling mod into their class armor. Finally, for the weapon mods, we have the recoil reduction mod for both your energy and kinetic primary weapons. I get questions about these mods almost, oh, I don't know, every time I stream on Twitch lately, people come in and ask me if these mods are good. I have an answer for you. Ready? It depends on the gun. One more time now. It depends on the gun. Um, but Fallout, I heard that doesn't actually do anything. I said it depends on the mother f***ing gun. Whew, I'm okay. From what I can tell, the additional recoil control helps out the most with weapons that have problems with horizontal recoil, aka the weapon kicks off to the side when you shoot it. Here's a comparison on the Nightshade Pulse Rifle. The benefit is there a little bit. Look at the non-modded bullet pattern all the way out to the far left. Definitely looks a little bit different. Want to see it on a very noticeable gun? Sure you do. Here it is on the Lincoln Green. That's noticeable. Now, if you were to compare the recoil on a gun with already solid vertical recoil, like the Last Hope, you wouldn't really notice much of anything. So my advice to you is, if you have a gun you really love using, try using it both with the mod and then again without the mod. If you find it makes a noticeable difference for the recoil pattern, then use that mod. If it doesn't, 
then don't wear it. Simple, no? Oh, and again, Hunter is the only class that can get the plus two recoil reduction mod because like the others, it's the only class that can get it into their class armor. All right, started from the bottom, now we're here. Mods that reduce the cooldown of your subclass abilities. But by how much though? Well, this much, of course. Once again, shout out to Datto. He had almost all of these numbers, missing only a very limited few, which I filled in myself. Things to notice. Titans naturally get their melee back faster than Hunters, and Warlock melees are weird because the Stormcaller, for whatever reason, has a different timer than the Voidwalker and Dawnblade. The Arc Bolt and Firebolt grenades are special snowflakes that have better cooldowns than literally every other grenade in the game, because of course they do, and there are only three situations in the game where a subclass can receive a plus three boost rather than a plus two. Only the Dawnblade can get a plus three cooldown on their Rift, only the Striker can get a plus three cooldown on their barrier, and only the Night Stalker can get a plus three cooldown on their dodge. I'll remind you, this information you don't need to screenshot. Open the video description down below, and the link to this very document is right there. If the game gets patched and the numbers change, I'll update the document. And there you have it, the benefits of armor mods in a nutshell. The benefits they give you might be a little bit minor, but hey, every little bit helps. If you're going into PvP, the raid, a prestige nightfall, whatever, you want to be bringing your A-game. There's really just no reason to not have mods on your gear at all. And before you ask, there is no best mod, because it all comes down to you. For example, I've been playing a lot of Voidwalker lately and using Devour. Because of that, I like mods that help reduce my grenade cooldown time so I can use Devour more. Is that what everyone should use? No, but it's what I like, so it's what I use. Use the mods that fit your playstyle. If you could do me a favor right now, like this video, and if you haven't already, then please sub to my channel. I've been known to make okay content every now and then. Oh, and also follow me on Twitch. Thanks for watching, hope you learned something, see you next time.